अंदर हो गया Oh, you're not supposed to drink it. No? It's, it's actually poisonous. <laughs> What? <laughs> Back in Kohima. Oimbong showed me around the city. We visited the famous World War II memorial and saw the tennis court which became a battlefield during the war. We also went shopping in the most fascinating market that I've ever been to. There are very few restaurants in Kohima that serve exotic local cuisine. So if you want to try the interesting stuff, you need to buy it and find someone to cook it for you. Fortunately for me, I had a home away from home in Kohima, and they generously offered to cook some local dishes that I wouldn't have otherwise been able to try. Ginger, right? Yeah. And that's king chili. That's bamboo shoot. Mm -hmm. And these are all mushrooms. Yeah. The dried ones are here. These are fermented bamboo that's shoot. That's the bamboo shoot. These are dried tomatoes. Dried mushrooms. Same. What are these? This we have a term for it. I don't know what exactly we call it. This is a kind of a. Oh, these are also spices. Yeah. Spices. That's a chili powder. This you see, I showed it to you. Yeah, what is this called? I don't know the English name for it. Actually, to be honest, these also. There you see. I had heard a lot about the exotic non-vegetarian dishes that are a part of Naga cuisine, but I was surprised to find that they have an extensive array of vegetarian food too. Meat is a part of most meals, but I also ate more types of vegetables in Kohima than I have anywhere else. The spices and cooking techniques that they use are also quite different. Every meal was a fascinating experience. to say the least here goes <laughs> it's interesting it's Yeah, there's a lot of flavor in it. Yeah, that's true. But it's sort of like hard mm. to eat. It's time to go. What the hell? Battery is dead. Since the bike wouldn't start, I had to put my plan to leave on hold. Until I knew what exactly was wrong, I didn't want to venture any further. We eventually managed to trace the problem down to a malfunctioning starter motor. 
since there were no big service centers around, we had to use the skills of some local mechanics to fix it temporarily. By the time that happened, the news was abuzz with warnings of an approaching cyclone. I ended up staying two more days in Kohima, waiting for the worst of Cyclone Mora to pass. Bye bye. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much. Anytime. Bye. The team in your team is for recording. Yeah. yeah. With a very bleak weather forecast, and given that the bike was not feeling particularly reliable, I had to make the difficult decision to not ride further to Manipur. We'd received news of landslides having occurred on several routes, and it seemed more cautious to start making my way back towards Assam. So instead of Imphal, this time around, I rode towards Dimapur. Just a few kilometers outside Kohima and already everything is just getting covered in slush. This is a good patch of road and it's covered with mud. So this mud is actually okay because it's completely wet. So the bike doesn't slide on this but there are some patches where you have this thick mud on the road which comes off the wheels of the bigger vehicles. And those parts are just insanely slippery. Here we go. Look at this. This is where the landslide happened. Side side jump. Thank you. The Dimapur Kohima Highway is the most arterial road in Nagaland. It is one of the most used roads in the state and integral for connectivity, for food, supplies, and travel. It was really surprising to see that such an important road was in such shambles in today's day and age. I have no idea how so many people travel through this route day in and day out. Essentially, just one huge cloud of dust. Once I crossed the border and entered Assam, the ride became a lot more leisurely. Decent roads and good weather made life a lot easier. Settled into a cruise mode, I made my way back to Jorhat.
Take me home